Hello, welcome back to the studio. This is going to be a little strange attempt, but I am in, in the process of preparing for an exhibition, and it's a bit of a remounting of a show I did last year, the show called 2020. And as per usual, I put off framing to the last possible minute and discovered I made a mistake. Oops, sorry about that. So, I don't know how much you can see, but see the border here and the border there? That's what it should be. That's what it is. I made a calculation error and because I was making a lot of frames, I um, didn't have time to go back and fix it, and this particular exhibition space was huge, so it was fine that the frames were a little bigger. It didn't look perfect, but I went with it. So, I'm in the process of reframing them now, and I'm gonna use some time lights video. So it's gonna require knocking off the framing, scaling the work down, and then new molding and then one of the things that happened in the process was this framing is a little too thin so I'm going to beef that up because it warped a little bit so it's kind of like because I'm remounting this exhibition at Kyle Gallery I have the opportunity to fix my mistakes and I am working on the process of getting eventually having all the work in the studio framed um, it'll protect it better and wrapped in plastic. Eventually that's going to become a real storage issue. So I'm going to switch this now to um, time lapse and watch, let you go through the process a bit. All right, so the frame part is off. Now the next step is to remove the thumbtacks. You see, I've got a little piece of paper to protect the artwork paper. And I'll come through and just remove the artwork. And if what happens happens there, of course, the tool isn't here. Hmm. Well, yeah, I'll find that in a minute. But to just come through here and pull each of these thumbtacks out so I can pull the artwork out. And of course, I'm not going to make you watch, you know, you can't figure out how to pull out a thumbtack. So we'll switch to time lapse again. All right, so now I've removed all the thumbtacks. Sorry for crossing in front of frame. Drop those into my recycling can. And then pull up the artwork gently. Because it's possible that I even, the paint may not have been totally dry when I pulled these apart. So, the nice thing is, my mistake was very consistent, so I can pull this artwork off and then we're going to switch to the table saw, which is already set to the proper dimension that needs to be cut. So I'm just going to give this a light roll. Set it aside and then we'll move to the table saw. So easy peasy, right?
All right, so now the piece is sized down, but you can see I've got a dilemma. So I cut off the lateral bars that were lap jointed. So I've, what you saw me on the chop saw was cutting these down to fit them in. And then I've got blocks. Also, do you like that little piece of dust on my finger? <laughs> so I've got these uh, corner braces, which I'll be attaching. We'll build all of this, put all this together, and then flip it over and nail the surface boards and putty them back together. So I'll just show you a little bit of this process and then switch to the time lapse again. So first we'll do a dry fit, always important. fit is pretty good. Now, just to emotionally prepare you, that compressor may cut on at any moment and that will be loud. So we're going to glue these pieces in. And of course you can see I had signed the back of the paintings and in some cases, I had now obliterated that vet signing entirely on the back. So naturally, I'll have to redo that. And you saw me pounding away, trying to break these free. And you can see the residual uh, Luan that stayed attached. So the glue is actually what holds it all together. And, you know, you glue and screw or glue and nail, you're basically nailing it to hold it together until the glue sets up. So now I've got that lined up where I want it. I'm going to put one here. Helps if you put the nails where they go, huh? There. Now I'll line this one up again. Alright, so that's that process, and of course I'll just keep repeating it. And because I'm going to keep repeating it seven more times, We'll go back to the uh, time lapse. But so this will give it its structure, and hopefully this design and the extra corner block will keep them from warping the next time. Okay, so now I've flipped the piece over. I'm not remembering which one it is. I'm gonna put it on here just so when I go to put it back together, I get the right artwork on the right thing, frame. The painting you see me working on is called There Will Be Peace, which is about the um, police overreach during the Black Lives Matter protests here in Richmond, Virginia. So now I'm switching to a shorter staple so that when I staple this back together, it um, the staples don't go through because in some places it would be long enough where those blocks are, but not all places. So
rather than uh, have to deal with when I grab it hitting the sharp edges of the staples. Now this vise is here because when I was cutting I kind of pulled this little section apart. So I want to make sure that's all back. Plus remember what I said about the um, thing warping so the tighter this all is it will help support it and the framing which I'll show you in a little bit that I have to um, that I have to remill so now this can come off of there and uh, on we go so it's just now hitting the other side and then I'll be um, putting the whole thing. So we'll switch back to time lapse. And then, because, uh, and there's a little bit of sanding and priming on all those pieces that are on the back wall over here. Well, they've all been puttied. So I'm going to putty this one, set it aside, sand and paint over the sanding areas on those. And then it'll be on to milling new frame. So far, so good, right? This is uh, something I was dreading. And just like with my paintings, I'll spend a lot of time thinking about how I want to do it long before I ever do it. So I talked about how the backs of the paintings are signed. So there's one that I don't have to re-sign. And of course, for posterity, having that on the back will prove, well, one, that this frame was made by the artist as well as just, you know, verisimilitude. No, that's not the word I want. Just authentication, authentication. That's probably not a word. Um, but then that will um, just correlate. And like I said, I'm trying to get it to where every piece of artwork in the studio has its frame. You can see there are ones, or you could see there are ones in the studio that aren't framed. And there are some in the studio that aren't finished. But that's sort of the goal. And so by putting the title of the piece on the back, that's sort of further. Because a lot of times I would swap out artwork from frames. So I'll just go back to time lapse for a bit of this. And then we'll shift on to the next project or next part of the project. All right, so now you've seen that process. So, and I should point out the reason that the center isn't painted is if you may remember, the artwork is push pinned around the edges, the thumbtack, and you really don't see any of here. I am having an internal debate with myself about the acid from the wood. The paint would stop that. But first off, main contact is right where it's thumbtacked. So that's where the main acid problem will be. Plus, this is not a composite wood, so it's not impregnated with glue. It's actually a luon, which is layers um, skinned off of the tree and then glued in layers. Although this stuff is a little different. They actually call it underlayment. Luon is a... Uh, rainforest product and so they fortunately are making less and less of that and have come up with this which um, seems to behave every bit as well. So I have one more that first one that you watched me putty is now dry enough to sand 
and then I'm going to stop for a bit because it's pickup granddaughter day. I always love going and getting my granddaughter from school. So I'm going to set this one outside, do the last one, and then go. So when I pick the video back up, we'll I'll be trying to figure out the molding. So thanks so much. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully this will be informative. It's also going to be interesting for me to watch. And I should say, because I think I'm going to end the video here and come back and do the molding part later. Um, Please give it a subscription. You'll know when I pop up new videos. I'm shifting now my art practices from painting bike racing like the Tour de France and the World Championships and back into my regular studio practice of the larger scale oil stick paintings. And I also do stained glass. You know, just trying to keep myself entertained. You know, there are certain ways of making art that requires certain medium. There are certain images that, like I've tried doing the oil stick paintings with cycling as the media, as the subject matter, and they don't work. They don't have the movement that the watercolor has. Whereas these big storytelling pieces, um, they don't, um, they don't have the statement, the, the, the power that's delivered by the sense of scale and the um, aggressiveness of the media fits the aggressiveness of the image. So give it a subscription so you know when I post the next ones. Thumbs up always helps. You know, and if you want to give a thumbs down, that doesn't hurt my feelings. You know, let's face it, nobody likes everything everybody does. And then, of course, um, I'd love to hear what you think. So thanks so much for watching. Truly appreciate it. And uh, you can see all of this artwork at gregleach.com. The cycling stuff that I write about is at the um, theartofcycling.blogspot.com. And I just realized the whole background is all of my stained glass supplies. The table up here is uh, the grinding table and such. Um, just because you may not remember. So that's a piece that's in process. This is a piece that is out of frame. This is a multi-layered stained glass piece. That's a dimensional stained glass piece that is um, in need of repair. And those are my bicycles that I'm kind of missing right now while I try to get this project out. So thanks for taking the time to watch. I truly appreciate it.